Uh, Greta Thunberg, my arch nemesis and fellow squarehead. You know, despite the political disparities, I like what you do. Fostering panic, making people anxious, inching all of us closer and closer to a Franz Ferdinand assassination style event to kick off the next major war. I like you better if you didn't bitch out and start crying in the middle of your speeches, but that's besides the point. I admire you for being a child and rhetorically outdoing professional politicians on divisive issues. It really shows how it only takes one strongly opinionated shithead to completely destabilize democracy, and I like that. You have a lot of balls for a Swede. Don't get me wrong though, you still are a shithead and the politics you promote are premium unleaded autism. For example, one thing Thunberg harps on about is countries like China and India signing the Paris Agreement, which I personally find hilarious. The Chinese have golden statues of Chairman Mao, his face is still on their money. What in the world makes you think they care about this planet in the slightest? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, Greta. They'll put a camel through the eye of a needle before you make a Chinaman go against his interests. As for Indians, there's a joke somewhere here about gas emission that I can't be bothered to make. Just know that one time a guy tried paying people to use the bathroom and he got beaten to death. That's just about all you need to know. And even if, by some miracle, you manage to complete the Sisyphean task of wrangling billions of Pajits and Orientals into giving an iota of a fisherman's fuck about this world, it wouldn't do you any favors. All it would do is massively constipate every country's economy, especially third world ones who can't afford sanitation, let alone fucking solar panels. On top of that, the 75 billion getting funneled into this issue won't put a dent in it anyway. The earth has been warming for the past 420,000 years without any human inventions farting out carbon. Turns out there's no amount of policy writing and protesting that can reverse nature. Go figure! Additionally, why do we keep subsidizing the delusions of grandeur of scientists who think they can predict the future? I know it's become virtually blasphemous to question a scientific consensus, but it baffles me how conjecture becomes prophecy the moment someone in a lab coat says it. Apparently, the more experienced an expert is, the less accurate his predictions become. Scientists can't help but be monomaniacal about their field of study, which makes them less likely to account for variables. These people have had intense tunnel vision on the same piece of molecular lint for the past 20 years. They're the last people to get future predictions from. In the 60s, there was a culturally relevant prediction that hundreds of millions would die from starvation by the 1980s due to overpopulation. And guess what? Didn't fucking happen. People have been proclaiming our demise is just 10 years away for the past 100. You might as well be reading schizo posts on X. On the other hand, this whole talk of incoming climate catastrophe is a mighty convenient cover up for the oil peak situation coming our way, as demonstrated by the graph. Another convenient thing is how behind every Bill Nye and Al Gore, there's a dozen government officials and corporate figures with huge incentives to regulate the shit out of energy. That's because science is an especially effective tool for raping the populace's pockets. Just present the layman with some graphs and you can convince him that it's necessary to give up his earnings to save us all from apocalypse. That's why governments love guiding the scientific autism towards envisioning the chrono trigger bad end screen globally. With people in fear and the alternatives regulated out of existence, the few energy sources left get an eternal carte blanche for incompetence because there are no other options. Stunts like these are pulled all the time. In fact, every one of 73 UN prediction models way overshot future atmospheric warming. This also serves to quench the secular boner for a carbon tax. And heed my words, soon enough you're gonna need a fucking breathing license. But of course, all this legal empowerment is just to stop capitalist swine from ruining the environment. The genius of the climate change crisis is that it's worldwide, meaning globalized policy making, also known as placing your tender little butt cheeks on a platter before UN politicians who now get to decide if you, a resident of Alabama, are allowed to use straws. One thing I find particularly interesting is that models that predict less extreme climate change get completely swept under the rug, which bodes very well with Greta's message. Adults keep saying we owe it to the young people to give them hope. But I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. Were that about an actual issue, I'd get the message. There's no diversionary tactic more insidious than the Western illusion of safety. If I had the opportunity to speak to a room full of paid-off Power Rangers putties, I'd probably say something along those lines. But the underlying narrative here is just making a buck off of the Doomer message, which I don't support. There's no upside to Doom parroting when the issue you're tackling is Ozone Galactus swallowing the Earth whole. What pisses me off even more is that people like Thunberg and Cortez get framed as radicals just because the solutions 
they propose are episodes of Bugs Bunny. Being a moron doesn't make you radical, especially when the people who back you up are worth millions. If climate change was as threatening as it's made out to be, the last thing you should do is reaffirm the politicians who are standing in the way of fixing it by getting all weepy and begging on your knees for policy changes. School strikes are for the fucking birds. If you really want some change, get yourself an assault rifle and in addition to my hypothesis of climate change being real, ask yourself this, should we even try to stop it? Because I find it strangely coincidental how New York and California, the bluest and most degenerate states who are the biggest fans of taxing everyone to smithereens will be underwater if the caps melt. Doesn't it sound like a god sent flood to you? Beyond all of that, I want to take a moment to appreciate the media coverage of the Greta Thunberg phenomenon. While she has received a little bit of media flack, the overwhelming majority of the online attention directed towards her is positive. It's not difficult to notice this media double standard that either praises or demonizes children based on their views. The contrast between the way the media treats Greta and I is very telling. Not once has any major publication gotten away with calling Greta brainwashed, puppeteered, or just trying to rebel. Is it because of that two year difference? Or is it because her views fall safely in that bubble of insanity that is socially acceptable? Greta, if you're watching, we're not that different, you and I. I wish for politicians to feel fear as well. Just not for the same reasons. Getting thousands of kids from all over the world to skip school every Friday to go against the government sounds great to me. If only your brand of it didn't entail financially fucking yourself over. Some people like to get on her case for that, saying that she's just looking for an excuse to get out of class. But even if she was, I entirely endorse it. The last place I want kids to be is in the public institution that they are forced to attend by law. More than endorse it, I outright advocate for finding every excuse possible to get out of school. If you're black, claim that laws surrounding school attendance are a form of modern day slavery. If you're a girl, say that forcing women into STEM is holding them to a patriarchal standard. In fact, I even encourage all the kids who plan to walk out to get me expelled from school. Do a walk out every week until I'm deported as far as I'm concerned. Nothing makes me happier than kids being bureaucratic hemorrhoids. I just wish Greta would stop entertaining fictitious nightmare scenarios and focus on the real one that is Sweden's immigration problem.